Good morning. Welcome to Grace for today. Blessings, everybody. God bless you. We are grateful for all that the Lord has done. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. And um, we're starting, oh, we're starting um, a new topic, so to speak, but it's still talking about the promises of the Lord. Let's see if I can see what y'all see. Okay, hold on. All right. And um, so we're going to talk about that. And we're going to talk about a promise of guidance, a prom, the promise of guidance. Oh, help. Sorry. I guess help and guidance are the same, aren't they? In the degree to a degree, but we're going to talk about the promise of guidance. That's what we're going to talk about. All right. So God bless everybody. And, uh, oh, let me fix this. So if it will ever pop up, good morning. I think, apparently, Facebook is a little slow with, um, there it is. Okay. All right. I see some of y'all. <laughs> All right. God bless everybody. Um, apologies for my tardiness. I've been sitting here just preparing, but yeah. All right. So we are grateful. God bless everybody. We'll give you all a few moments. Hey, Lady Janelle. Hey, good morning, Annie Ingram. Good morning, Sister Cassie. Good morning, Miss Sherry McKinnis. God bless everybody. And um, y'all pray that my ink for my printer come in. That's my fault I didn't order early enough, but, you know, it should have lasted longer than it did. It didn't, but we're present. So good morning, everyone. I'm going to give you all a few more moments, and then we're going to get started with our teaching for today. We're going to talk about uh, the promise of guidance, of help. Why am I still stuck? Oh, no. Today is a promise of guidance. It is. It is. It is. It's a promise of guidance. And then tomorrow we start with the promise of help. Different thing. So, um, well, tomorrow if I don't if I don't finish early. So let's look at this. We're going to look at Psalm 73, verses 23 and 24. Psalm 73, verses 23 and 24. I want to read it to you from um, another translation while y'all are coming on. Hmm. Okay, um, for some reason, that's odd. So I just share, I'm going to share, if y'all give me just a moment, there are apparently people cannot, everybody's not catching grace for today. I'm going to see if I can, I share it on my personal page already. Um, y'all give me a sec. There. Let's try that. So, God bless everybody. And uh, let me go back and see what y'all see. Okay. So, we're going to talk about this last portion of uh, the promise of guidance. I hope that this series, this teaching on guidance has blessed you. We must always expect, hey, Phyllis Marie, um, praying your strength today. We're praying for Sister Phyllis Marie Mann because we just believe the Lord to cover her as she lays her mama, who is a woman of God, to rest. Y'all pray for her. She's my friend. Um, I don't know what's going on with, with Facebook. I do share it to my personal page now because people have told me that they're not getting notifications. I don't know. I just don't know what to do to help Facebook. I told y'all, y'all better go to YouTube and um, subscribe over there because I have no guarantees about Facebook. But let's go ahead. Y'all pray for Sister Phyllis as she lays her mom to rest today. I know that the Lord will cover her and give her peace. 
because that's the kind of God he is. Crying does not mean you don't have peace. We grieve because we're human, but it's just not the clothes we wear the rest of our lives. All right, Psalm 73, verses 23 and 24. Let's look at that. And it says, nevertheless, I am continually with thee. What a powerful word. I am continually with you. It says, thou hast holden me by my right hand. We want that to be our testimony today. Because we need the Lord to be with us and we need to be with him continually. We need to trust his presence. We need to trust his guidance, trust his direction. Here, he says this. He says, um, I want to read this, read a little bit uh, above this, if y'all don't mind. Good morning, everybody. He says this, um, I feel like I need to read so much. Let me start at verse 17. Goodness, y'all just need to read Psalm 73. That's the best I could tell you from the Amplified. Read that and let it bless your soul. There is so much that God wants to do in us. You know, if we could just be mindful let me put a pin right there. Sometimes we are not mindful. What does that mean? Hey, Sister Annie Carter. We Being mindful means that we give attention to something. Sometimes we are mindful of the wrong things. We are mindful of things that don't lead us to life. We remember every negative word spoken over. They told me I was, I was ugly when I was in the, the first grade. I remember where and when and who said it and who agreed and who didn't agree. Who didn't say anything. You, re, you are mindful of things that lead to your death or that lead or deplete you of strength. You should be mindful of what is going, going to produce life in you in your environment. We can be mindful of, ev we believe every negative word spoken about us, but then we refuse to agree with the word of God over our lives. Don't you think that's a plot of the adversary that you don't believe what God says, but you believe every negative word? Listen, I raise both my hands. I know what low self-esteem and inferiority complex looks like. But I know that we have to change our thinking to start saying what God says about us. We must be mindful. We must give attention to and believe and speak out of our, our mouths what God says. He is ever present. There's a song we sing. His praise, I don't know this song, but I'm gonna sing the what I remember. His praise shall ever be on my lips ever be on my lips his we need to be always keep that at the in our mouths in our thinking renew our minds with the word of god renew it's a daily process renewing our minds you 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 i don't care if you've been saved 50 million years you still need to keep the word of god because you've got an adversary trying to throw those fiery darts over there Hallelujah. Throw those fiery darts at you to make sure you don't stay on the straight and narrow so that you end up feeling more about what you feel than what God says about you. Let's choose verse seven, chapter um, Psalm 73 and verse 23. Nevertheless, I, I'm going to read a little bit above that. I'm just going to read, okay? And I believe the Lord will do what the Lord does. He does the work. We're just conduits. I keep telling y'all that. We are just conduits. Here. He says, oh goodness, I feel like I don't know where to start. Let me just start here. Behold, these are the ungodly who always prosper and are at ease in the world. They increase in riches. Amen, Sister Annie Ingram, absolutely, girl. We, Nicole Williams, I love you. You've been on my mind. I need to call you. He says this, 
Surely then in vain have I cleansed my heart and washed my hands in innocency. For all the day long have I been smitten and plagued and chastened every morning. Now this is, this is what he's saying. The ungodly seem to be prospering and I'm struggling. Have I, had I spoken uh, thus and given expression to my feelings, I would have been untrue and have dealt treacherously against the generation of your children. He said, if I'd said what I wanted to say, it would have been the wrong thing because I was going through. But when I considered how to understand this, it was too great an effort for me and too painful, my Lord, until I went into the sanctuary of God. Didn't I just say we need to be mindful? We need to be mindful. Until I went into the sanctuary of God, then I understood, for I considered their end. I considered their end, E-N-D. You get overwhelmed when you look at the evil, you look at the wicked people who seem to be prospering. They're not honoring God. They look like they're they're doing so, uh, faring sumptuously. They're getting everything that you think you want. And you can get discombobulated because you are overwhelmed by what you don't have, what you're lacking, what it appears you're lacking. And this is what, this is actually a Psalm of Asaph, not David, but it's Asaph. And he says, but listen, what I did, I, if I had spoken my heart, what was in my mind, I would have said some grievous things because I saw them prospering and I saw myself and those who do right. I saw them struggling. He says, but then I went into the house of God. I went into the sanctuary and I understood their end, their end, how they ended. See, what we do is look at where people are right now. And we think this is great. But if that's all they're going to get, if this is all the, 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 the joy they're going to get, if this is all they're going to get is what they see now, you should feel sorry for them. Because there is an eternity. And beloved, we're sowing into our eternity. Don't judge a person by their greatest day or you judge them too big. Don't judge them by their lowest day. Y'all remember that? Or you judge them too small. Every day takes care of itself. I'm going to have to pick this up tomorrow. But he says, all the day long, I've been smitten, plagued, and chastened. What an awful predicament. But he says, I, and then I went to the house of God. And then I realized that the end of those people, and that's why the Bible says, don't fret about evildoers. We need to be mindful. Keep your mind. We used to sing that song, I woke up this morning with a mind. Staying on Jesus. I woke up this morning with my mind. Stay. I woke up with him on my mind. Hallelujah. Before the world tries to crowd us, all, all of our good thoughts out. We need to wake up with our mind on Jesus. He satisfies. Joy he supplies. No, it's a different song. I know it's a different song. I know it's a different song. Life would be worthless without him. All things in Jesus I find. Peace and joy every day I find. When I call him. He answers right on time. Oh, what's the rest of that? Y'all know it. Anyway, you just need to know. Keep your mind on Jesus. Keep your mind on Jesus. Beloved, if you don't hear anything else I say, keep your mind on Jesus. I'll pick this up tomorrow. But God will, well, I won't get to help tomorrow, but I'm going to finish up guidance tomorrow. We must always keep our minds on him because otherwise you will always be what that other verse said. You'll be looking at evil people. You'll be looking at those who are prospering in the way and they're evil. They're not believers. But you better realize they have an end that's different than yours. Hallelujah. Even the scripture says better is the end of a thing than the beginning.
God has plans for me. He has plans for me. I got to go. I got to stop singing too. But listen, God has plans for you too. You better keep your mind on Jesus. That's what Elder Ingram just said. You better keep your mind on Jesus. We used to sing that song. I didn't sing this because it was before my time. But it was a song the saints sing. I'm going to say this and I'm going to pray, I promise. They would sing, it says, my mind, my mind, my mind is gone. Well, that old evil mind I used to have, my mind is gone. That mind, that's what they were talking about. But our minds ought to be on him. Renew your mind with the word of God and keep your mind on the Lord. While you at work, you ain't got to go around. My mind on Jesus, I can't talk to y'all. That's not what he's saying. Keep your focus. Don't get distracted. Don't get distracted. I got to go. Father, thank you so much for what you're working in us. Keep our hearts and our minds steadfast, stayed on you. Help us to be mindful. Help us to be mindful. Cover our children. Cover their minds. Let them be resilient to every negative force, every negative influence. In the name of Jesus, we cover them with the blood of Jesus. No weapon formed against them will prosper. Lord, turn things in their favor. Give them favor. Let their teachers see them and love them. Father, we thank you now that you are a healer. Lord God, you give us bread that will cause healing to our bodies. We honor you and we bless you and we thank you now that you give us wisdom and direction. You open doors before us that no man can close. Go before us now. Bring the job that we need. Father, bring the finances that we need. Give us the favor that we need. Give us the wisdom and the understanding. Make us of quick understanding. Father, we thank you now. We receive the, be our healer. Heal our bodies. Lord, we thank you and decree healing over Linda Carroll now. We decree peace over Phyllis now. Those who would need recovery of Mother Davis, God, we thank you that, that you will give testimonies, oh God, of your healing power. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord God, that you bring healing, oh God, to the Ingrams. God, bring healing to your sons and your daughters. We honor you even now. We receive it done in Jesus' name. So it is. Amen. All right, I got to go. I got to get ready to teach a class at 1015. Um, they're not live streaming, but it's just a class on social media. And uh, but they will they will post it later and I may share it then. We'll see. God is helping us, Ashley Reed. <laughs> Hallelujah. Remember, no weapon formed against you produces what the enemy intended. All right. Got to go. Hey, don't forget to share the video. Our shares are a little low. Could everybody watching share real quick? We'll be on point. All right. So, join me in the morning at 7.15 a.m. Central Time. Until then, remember this. Time spent in the Word of God is never, ever wasted. Ever. We'll upload this to YouTube in just a moment. All right. See y'all in the morning. Until then, God bless you. Have a great day. Peace.